मिस संगीता सुमेश मिस संगीता इज ऑन अ मिशन टू सर्व बाय एजुकेटिंग एम्पावरिंग एंड एलिवेटिंग बिजनेसेस she works with entrepreneurs leaders and team on financial growth and high performance she brings along rich corporate experience of 25 years and including leadership positions with multinationals across geographies sangeeta is a chartered accountant and management accountant and has completed an executive education program from harvard business school she is a professional speaker high performance business coach credentialed from international coaching federation author of the best seller what the finance a glance at uncommon and the power of high performance coaching sangeeta is a keynote speaker at many national and international events various forums multinational on business finance high performance and leadership she believes in value creation for her clients we welcome you ma'am before we get in to the session I request all the participants to join us in welcoming the speaker by typing hi in the chat section. For any queries or comments, use the chat section which we will then later use the questions to address the speaker. Over to you ma'am. Welcome. Thank you very much for the Yeah, thank you so much for the introduction. and it's a pleasure to be here online and uh, addressing everybody so i'm just turning on my share screen option just give me a moment please yeah i hope you can see my screen okay and is it possible to flash uh, the two screens both me as well as uh, the ppt Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. It's great. So, very good morning, everybody. And uh, I would have loved to meet you all in person, but due to the current uh, scenario, we'll have to just meet online and uh, see what best can be done during these. Uh, challenging times so i know that you know many businesses are like you know struggling given the current scenario so what best can be done by each business is what i thought it will be worth exploring in today's session and see what sort of outcomes we'll be able to create and what sort of takeaways you will have at the end of the session so that your business is able to you know thrive in the current scenario so this is the objective with which you know i thought i'd prepare because uh, i'm a gain enabler so i like enabling gains for everybody around both be it financial gains or non financial gains so i do this as a high performance business coach uh, an author as well as a speaker so let's see what we can together create today and i'd love you all love that uh, you all interact as much as possible today so that you know it's more lively and i am able to get a lot of energy from out of you guys right so with that uh, you know welcome to all of you let's deep dive right away so what are we exactly looking at today is you know i thought i'll call them as a b c d so a is to see how we can adopt the growth mindset you know these are like challenging times so despite these challenges you know what can be done to adopt the growth mindset because i think a lot of it is you know right here in our heads the way we perceive and then the way how we need to overcome so if it will be great if you are able to adopt the growth mindset and you know look at things in a positive manner and then we'll also have to see it's uh, you know how to build teams during these uh, crises because we know together is when we can team as they say is together everyone achieves more so we'll have to see how we can go around building teams and then c is to see how we can churn the business wheel so that you know the most out of the business is come through and d of course to see how we can design the action plan so these are the four things that we are going to be talking about today so the growth mindset how we are going to build teams how we are going to churn the business wheel and to see how you can design the action plan is the agenda for today so with that let me you know before i deep dive let me kind of try and set the context to today's talk so like we know these are like you know different times uh, 
very different. None of us have even experience about it. But having said that, you know, uh, I'm a high performance business coach. So before we even look at what is there in today's session, what exactly is high performance, right? High performance, I would define it as achieving superior results by performing at superior standards as the set targets. So all of us, be it our individual self or our business, we all have unlimited potential is what I believe. And for us to realize the potential, tap into it and perform, that's when I think the best in you or the best in your business is going to come about. So considering the given situation, the challenges, the criteria that you may have, how exactly you know we would be able to uh, maximize your potential, your business's potential and achieve high performance is what I want to talk about. So as I said, high performance is as per set targets. So what exactly are the targets that you are setting for yourself and your business is that something we need to check. So today is, of course, the international uh, MSME day. And I suppose most of the audience are from the MSME segment. So I'm going to be talking a lot in the context for the entrepreneurs and the MSMEs and, of course, the business heads who are around. So I thought I'll set the context for this uh, session today. You know, we all have always been know the VUCA word, which is nothing but the volatile, volatile, uncertain, uh, complex and ambiguous word. But, you know, I would go a step ahead and say it's not just VUCA, but it's VUCA because the R stands for the risky riskiness, you know, because anything and everything that you do is risky and D is the disruption because there's so many disruptions that are going on. I mean, of course, even be it uh, the, uh, you know, few years ago or even in the current times, there are so many disruptions that happen. So considering all this, you know, which is uh, volatility, the uncertainty, the complexity, the ambiguity, the riskiness and the disruption, what can you do in your business, right? So that you're able to overcome these things and be successful in your business. Now that should be the aim and the mission of your business. So there are challenges. It's not that there have never been challenges. Now, if you were to look at the past, you know, there have been pandemics, there have been recession, there has been economic slowdown, so many things. We even had the Y2K, for instance, right? And yet, despite all that, so many businesses have managed, you know, they have survived so well, uh, they have succeeded and they have grown over the years. So how can your business be that way, right? So despite these challenges, probably even before all this crisis, I'm sure your businesses faced many different sorts of challenges, many different crises in, you know, that is probably more uh, relevant to your industry or to your business. But despite all that, you have managed to tide across and, you know, uh, swim across it and uh, be emerged successfully as a winner. So what are the lessons that can be learned, be it from your past, your industry's past, or, you know, from the many years ago, how are you tapping into the collective wisdom, right? So that is important. So if you probably even take a moment to reflect and pause on these things, there are probably some hidden gems lying there. So this is just to kind of nudge you and see what can be done about it, right? So instead of kind of panicking and saying, oh no, my business is not doing well, everything is lull, it's gloomy, it's you know depressing. Instead of focusing there, if you were to focus and see what sort of uh, you know, solutions are available. What sort of remedies are there in this? And maybe if you even refer to the past, there are possibilities that some hidden gems may be available. So as a, you know, high performance business coach, I thought it would be good for me to nudge you to think on these lines, right? So when you get the time uh, at the earliest possible, so just look through and reflect on these. So let's now start looking at, you know, we told the A stands for to adopt the, uh, growth mindset. So like you probably know, there are two sort of mindsets is what I would say. One is of course, the fixed mindset, right? And that leads to a desire just to look smart, right? And the other is the growth mindset, wherein you lead to a desire to learn, you want to grow more, you know, as the name says, how exactly are you growing? You know, is it just being fixed in your particular mindset? Or do you want to grow and evolve? Right? So what exactly is the difference between these two? In a fixed mindset, if there are any challenges, you want to avoid it, right? Whereas in a growth mindset, if you have challenges, you want to embrace it. Now, let me pause here and tell you a little story. Uh, this is about two people in similar businesses. 
come similar competing businesses and they were you know uh, in the same vicinity and of course the pandemic struck the lockdown happened and everything so one of the business owners you know he said you know i don't see much growth happening uh, yeah, there is too much of challenges too much of threat and um, you know because of the uh, uh, the spread the virus and everything and i don't think the business would do well i'm not going to be getting customers i'm you having huge overheads and you know the cost of living is high and therefore he decided he wants to move back to his village and you know he thought he will close the business for you know some time and then come back uh, to the city so while he moved away his competitor decided to you know stay back and see how exactly to go about this challenge and you know he actually started facing the challenge and embracing the challenge and as a result what he was able to do is he was able to get the customers of the person who went away as well so his business actually started to grow despite these challenges you know so that is the sort of mindset that i'm referring to so if you think you know it's fixed and then you know these are challenges and i don't really want to go about looking through them then you avoid the challenges then you will have a fixed mindset whereas if you have a growth mindset you're ready to embrace you know you are there you're taking the charge and you are ready to play the game and be a go getter so what sort of mindset do you have is something i'd like you to think through and act on it accordingly so the second is in a fixed mindset you have when you have obstacles you know you give up obstacles very easily and you don't want to take any action oh you know this is not permitting me to grow this is not permitting me to do anything further is that's the sort of mindset you have whereas in the growth mindset obviously even if there are obstacles and then you know you're able to get over these setbacks and then emerge a winner so a lot of it is in the mind on how you pursue and how you perceive things right so the third difference is on the effort you know when you have a fixed mindset you think like you know whatever efforts we take it's going to be fruitless you know there's no point trying so you don't even want to try many times whereas if you have the growth mindset you are ready and you see the effort as a path to mastery you want to achieve mastery you want to be on the top and you want to see how much you can really gain out of it right so that is one key difference and then of course you have criticism so when you get criticism uh, you know there are two ways to look at it so when you're being criticized you can always say oh this person doesn't know he just wants to put me down put my business down and you know uh, not giving me the right sort of feedback and i don't even want to hear this and then you just ignore the feedback and think it is not in your best interest but if it is in your best interest you learn from the criticism you need to grow out of it and you know if somebody is pointing out to you then you will just have to see what best can you do to overcome that of course not all criticisms are good i would definitely acknowledge that as well but you are wise enough you know which one you want to retain and which one you want to let go so considering that if the criticism is not good for you you know you think it's not helping you in your progress of course it's the best to ignore it and if it is in your best interest then definitely think through how you can overcome it and take it as a good feedback for improvement and work on it so that's how people pursue the criticism when they have a fixed mindset and a growth mindset the last difference is the success when you see your competitors you know uh, they are more successful than you then you tend to feel jealous you tend to feel threatened about it right when you have a fixed mindset whereas if you have a growth mindset you know you feel inspired by them you feel okay let me also you become one like them let me learn from it and thereby grow so that is the key difference between the fixed mindset and the growth mindset so what sort of mindset do you have and you know what is the mindset that you are adopting in your business is something i'd like you to think about so having said that you know you may be wondering how can i actually develop the growth mindset i you know want to be on the path of growth so how can i exactly go and develop the growth mindset so let me give you some pointers for this as well because it's you and your business and once you do well your business will automatically do well because a lot of it i believe is in how you're programming your mind so to start off with the growth mindset right so the first thing is you have to listen take a pause and just reflect what exactly is your mind telling you right what is your mind voice your inner voice what exactly is it telling you so is it telling you that you know you're afraid of failure and you like you know backing away from a challenge right is that the mindset that you have and you think that's an easier way out what exactly are you doing there 
or is it that you're just making excuses and story saying oh no now it's like very tough this is not the best time for me to do anything and you just want to take a back seat and run away with uh, excuses or is it that you feel angry when you get constructive feedback you know oh this person doesn't know what i'm going through i'm finding it so challenging this is not the way to do my business you probably are having that sort of a mindset so what exactly is going through in your mind i would like you to take a pause and hear to what your mind voice is actually trying to tell you so that is the first thing on listening to your mind voice the second thing is for you to remember that you actually have a choice you probably feel all this i don't know i'm just guessing but if that be the case remember that you have a choice because it's up to you how you're interpreting these challenges and these setbacks right what are you telling yourself what sort of stories are you building around it right so you would know the best so if you actually think through on these lines you'd probably be able to evolve better so the third is when you have this sort of a mindset you recognize it and then you want to outgrow it and adopt the growth mindset you talk back to your mind voice with the growth mindset voice right so just to give you an example so the fixed mindset will tell you if you don't try you know uh, you can it's it's safer you know uh, you actually protecting yourself and your dignity but then the growth mindset will tell you if i don't try i automatically fail you know i don't even know what is there in store so let me just pause here and share my little experience here with you uh, i actually never had plans to become an author right it was never in my uh, thought process at all but what had happened i had gone on a family vacation to cambodia and i had been to the killing fields in nom pen which is the capital of cambodia and you go there you know from 1970 to 74 there was a mass genocide and even now when you go and walk in the killing fields you will actually find pieces of bones and nail very barbaric very cruel and gruesome stories you know and when i heard that and saw these things it did something to me and unknowingly i had weaved a story in my head so i thought you know why not write about it but then again you know i at that point in this aspect i had a fixed mindset because i said you know what will people say what if they say the book is no good and you know it's it's better that i don't write and i just pushed aside all the thoughts but luckily after about a year i chanced upon a 100 day book authoring challenge and somehow uh, you know since the story kept coming back to my head i said okay let me give it a shot and i wrote the book it's called the glance of the unknown and uh, guess what the book was very successful and i in fact won an award that gave me like you know 100 inspiring authors of india now this was something i had never even thought of never even dreamt about so you know if i had decided to say that you know i'm not even going to try this and i don't even want to do it i have automatically failed so the the key is at least for you to try because only if you try would you even know you know what exactly you're capable what is your business capable of so this story is just for you to reflect for your business and see what you can actually be doing for your business so that you never know what your business is actually capable of and you know what sort of offerings you'll be able to give to your customer so the thing is just go ahead and try it's all right if you fail but what if you succeed right so think through on those lines again on fixed mindset people say oh it's not my fault it's someone else's fault or you know they don't want to take the responsibility whereas in the growth mindset people acknowledge you know they say that yes it is my responsibility and i can fix it and let me listen to what it is saying and let me learn out of it so that i can grow further right so that is how you look at a fixed mindset and a growth mindset so to continue again so what are the actions that you need to take to adopt the growth mindset right for you to take action now that you've thought and reflected and you know uh, arrived at few things in your head now how exactly are you going to take action right so how you need to go about is you have to take on the challenge wholeheartedly saying yes i'm going to go for it and i'm going to achieve my very best and you might have had setbacks or failures in the past and you know what is it that you're learning out of it right so that is something again you need to think through and acknowledge and embrace imperfection see we are all not here to be 100% perfect right each of us have our own inset of uh, imperfections in many different things it's all right to be with it but as long as we are getting the end result that is you know worthwhile then you should just go for it and turn a blind eye to your imperfections and of course you need to view challenges as an opportunity what sort of opportunities are there and you need to view these challenges and see how you can overcome them in order to be successful 
and thereafter you make a plan right how do you go about the plan you know when where how how am i going to go about this you know what sort of uh, you know the setback that i have and i need to kind of reset and reboot my business and then see how i need to go about so that is what is important in having a growth mindset so i hope you got the difference between the fixed mindset and the growth mindset so i would recommend that you know you wear the growth mindset hat and then look at a business your business with a new and fresh perspective to see what really it can offer for you and how you can grow it further despite whatever challenges despite whatever criteria are there for you so this is something i'd like you to think through about so once now that we have covered this let's move on and uh, we will look at the next aspect which is no okay even before that i have some food for thought for you you know i'd like you to kind of reflect on this and see how and what you can do during these times right so what are the opportunities for learning and growing right so if you take a moment's pause and reflect on it you know where are the things lying you know where do you have untapped potential of your business and how can you actually maximize them so just think about that and also i'd like you to think to say how are you going to get better in developing your growth mindset probably you already have a growth mindset i don't know and if you do have a growth mindset already how can you get it better how can you always you know uh, uh, stay positive look at things because this too shall pass right so how is it that you're maintaining because mentally you need to be like you know really up to it and only then you'll be able to grow so how exactly are you developing this sort of growth mindset if you are in fixed mindset of course you need to shift to the growth mindset and if you are already in the growth mindset then what you need to do is how is it you are developing even further is what i'd like you to think about and of course you are the leader for your business so how can you nurture your team for the growth mindset because it's not sufficient only if you have the growth mindset it's very important for your team also to have the growth mindset right so how are you nurturing them as well and because you know they say it flows from the top so once you remain uh, you know strong and positive and have a growth mindset then your team is automatically going to pick up the growth mindset as well so think about that so this is what i wanted to share with you about the growth mindset and if you have any questions about the fixed mindset or the growth mindset do type it out in the chat and i'll be happy to share whatever i know with you right good so now let's move on to the next aspect which is building teams right why is it even important to have teams whether crisis or no crisis for you and your business to be a winner it's very important to have your teams it's simply important because together you achieve more right as a team you are able to do a lot more than you can single handedly so to give you examples take any of the group sport activities right it can't be one just with one person everybody has to pitch in a little even if you take cricket probably it's just one person one batsman who's scoring a century but then there are those little runs that come from the other players as well so similarly in your business probably you or you know just certain uh, division or department is the one that's contributing the most but that apart remember that there are many other functions to the business right it could be support functions or it could be an administrative function whatever it is but they are all also supporting and contributing to the success and the win of your business so look at it like a sport you know look at it like a game you know that would interest you so how is it that together as a business you know all the divisions together all your uh, important people your senior management all of you together how is it that you're making it uh, you, uh, uh, create a win for your business right so not just that because by doing that you're actually tapping on the collective wisdom it's not just you know your thoughts about your business but then once you look at the collective wisdom from everybody else then it becomes more impactful and more meaningful because a collective wisdom is always more it has more weightage than a single person's you mind but then when you get more like so how you tackle the collective wisdom and then of course by you know involving your team you are actually making them responsible and accountable as well right 
so it's important to harness them together so see how you are exactly involving your team so that they also feel part of the business they feel part of this game and they are also putting in their very best to see how they can contribute and grow the business and then of course together as a team you brainstorm you know you look for new ideas and see how which is the best way to come out of it i would like to again pause here and share a little story with you this is something that i read somewhere uh, very interesting you know so there there was this uh, person who had a small business and uh, he had a fairly large team of 15 to 20 people considering that it was a small business and of course the business was also hit by the current crisis so he didn't have sufficient money he hadn't built cash reserves and he didn't know how exactly to be handling the situation at this point in time so what he did is you know he called all the team members and then he said listen our business is being affected this is the amount of cash that we have we probably have a cash runway for the next three to four months but if there is no business that's trickling in and since our industry is also affected what best do you think can be done now when he put across this question to his own team members you know they had different ideas that sprung up and not just that they even voluntarily the team themselves they said no we will all take only a 50% salary because we know times are bad times are challenging for the business as well so we will take they volunteered to have a salary cut and they said when the business picks up we will be getting it back as a bonus and when things are more hunky dory so this was not something you know imposed by the business owner but it was something that was suggested by the team and that's why it makes it more important to you know involve your team you know get their ideas you know make them feel part of the business and see how you can overcome this together and of course by doing that you're actually leveraging you know each person has their own strengths and if you're able to tap in and leverage onto each person's strength then the best is going to come out let's say some one person in your team is good at digital marketing for example so he can always go ahead and leverage on his strength of digital marketing and you know creating the necessary awareness of your business this is just an example but like that each person is bestowed with different sort of talents and different things so how exactly are you leveraging that as your team member and growing your business is a thought i'd like you to think through and mull over so that is it about the building the teams aspect so then now let's move on to the next aspect which is churning the business wheel right a business like you know comprises of many different aspects right so if you were to kind of pay attention as a business owner to the different aspects of the business then probably something could evolve the key is you know with the growth mindset along with your teams if you start deep diving into your own business then things will start to emerge so that is the idea with which i wanted to share with you on the churning the business wheel so let me again take a pause here and share with you now this is a you know a common challenge that most businesses face like you're already aware so some of my clients had come and asked me what can be done and so this is actually a kind of outcome of that is where i had advised them you know of course it is specific and subject to each business but this is a summary and will give you an overall idea on what you can do for your business and of course if you need any further assistance you know individually subjective to your business i'm more than happy to you know work with you and help you through this crisis so see what you can do in your business wheel now like we know i'd say um, the business wheel comprises of eight major spokes any business by and large if i were to cover it so what are the eight of course the first thing is finance being a finance professional i would always uh, you know give more importance to finance and not just that finance is the backbone of any industry any business that you're doing right so you why does your business exist it exists to make money so uh you need to pay a lot of attention to the finance now we would be deep diving into each of these but let me first tell you what the uh the eight spokes of the business wheel are so first is the finance second of course are your suppliers because you know your suppliers and vendors because a lot of your business runs through them right so you need to pay attention to your suppliers and vendors as well and of course the people you know i say the people are very important they are the actual real assets of any business if you ask me because they are the ones who make your business you know i had been on a holiday to scotland glasgow and then there were these huge posters all around the city which said 
people make glasgow and i thought it was so true because you know be it an organization or a business the people are the ones who actually make it you know they are the the face of your business right so people are very important which is nothing but your human resources in fact i'd like to call them as human capital the fourth of course are your customers right because your business is there to serve your customers and without the customers your business is nothing so customers are important and then is marketing right how well are you marketing and how well are you attracting customers to your business and then you need to have strategy in place right only then your business can really grow and uh, develop so what sort of strategy do you have in place and then the operations your business operations you know it could be services or product whatever you are how exactly are you managing the operations of the business and last but not the least is technology you know we're living in the technological era so how are you managing with the technology so these are the main eight aspects of a business wheel the spokes of a business wheel and let's deep dive into each of them individually and see what can be learned from these not just learned actually what can you do as a business owner in each of uh, these parts so that your business potential can be maximized right so ready let's get started finance as i said you know let's start with finance the money the moolah and what your business can actually do on the money aspect right so first get to know your current liquidity state right what is your cash runway how long can your business actually manage and run without uh, a run with your existing cash right so get to know your liquidity position first because what i noticed is a lot of business owners uh, and entrepreneurs they were not really sure how much money is in hand and how long they can last and how they going to go about you know the these challenging times so first get to know your liquidity right how much money you have and how you can how long it can take you through this current crisis so get to know the liquidity and then you need to know what your working capital requirement is right so for your business to prolong how much of money do you need let's say in the next 3 months or 6 months whatever so do some basic calculations you know understand what your requirements are what are your business's requirements so you know the liquidity and then say okay this is the amount of cash that my business requires in the short term period so get to know that first and without knowing this there is no point in just starting to panic get to know this and then see what sort of remedial actions you need to take say let's say your requirement is i'm just giving a number let's say it's just 100 and you probably you have a liquidity of 80 so you know let's say you're running short of 20 more for the short term and what sort of actions can you take now right how can you actually ensure that you are able to even break even if from with regard to your working capital so these are things that you need to work through so maybe it calls for like you know whatever cost cutting measures or you know negotiating better terms and conditions with your suppliers with your bankers and so on but the thing is get to know this first and then start taking necessary actions on it and then what sort of financial decisions are you making you know many times i have noticed that you know entrepreneurs tend to make a lot of uh, financial decisions that are coming out from their emotions while we are human and you know we are dominated by emotions you also need to look at it from a business perspective you know think more radical more rational and think from a finance perspective you know what sort of impact will any decision that you make as a business owner what sort of impact will it have on the business finance right so that is very important so how are you making what sort of financial decisions are you making and then is compliance you know you might as well comply to all the rules and regulations because you don't want to be end up ending up paying uh, penalties and interest and you know waste your money in those places so you might as well ensure you're complying to all necessary rules and regulations that your business needs to face and you can also ask uh, you know get in touch with consultants or experts in those areas uh, tax consultants whoever and then ensure you're always compliant with the rules and regulation because the cost of non compliance is very high okay so you ensure on the compliance and then i would encourage you to prepare cash forecasts you know what is the business looking like in the next say 3 months or 6 months whatever because you need to have that visibility so that you can plan your cash outflow see the cash inflow is never under your control 
what is under your control is only your cash outflow so how are you controlling you know plan it up you know what if customer pays you something well and good but if the customer is going to be delayed in his payment then how is your business being impacted right so you need to take a call of all this you need to look at the pros and cons and then see how much of cash that you have so that you can plan the business activities according to that so that becomes important so those these are the main aspects of finance right so look through it in a holistic manner in all aspects of finance and how your business can manage you know uh, it's two things one is of course you have from a finance perspective are you you will have to manage the cash and of course you will also have to manage the profits so how are you managing between the two probably even if you are not making high margins or you're not having a huge surplus of cash ensure that you're breaking even both in terms of cash as well as in terms of profit so at least get to that stage and of course anything over and above that will be awesome so that's something i'd like you to think through and then let's talk about the people or you know the human asset that's what i call them so what can you do to your teams to your people because the people are the ones who are actually supporting your business they are the biggest pillars of your business if you ask me so you should also realize your employees are also morally affected you know so as a businessman as an entrepreneur as a business head what can you actually do to engage them in a meaningful manner right because you probably like working from home yeah, especially if you are in the services industry and all that so people are already you know mentally kind of feeling this difference and it's since it's been there for a last uh, longer period as well how are you engaging them meaningfully right because when their mind is occupied and being more productive then you know the focus of the team is in doing more rather than thinking of these negative factors so it is very essential that you know you engage with them meaningfully so they feel part of the team they feel they are contributing to the business so engage with your teams meaningfully and then communicate you know during this crisis you probably have heard it in other places as well it's important to communicate 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 be in touch with your teams uh, keep them updated of the progress little thing anything about the business and of course you can even go beyond if you have good rapport it will be good to check a little more on their progress their welfare their well being and everything so important aspect is to keep in touch and communicate every aspect of the business to them of course not all the confidential details but whatever each person is entitled to at whichever level they are it's important to keep uh, communicating with your team and keep them all together so communicate coach them you know either you coach them or you can get professional coaches like me to talk to them and you know address them so that they feel like okay this is fine you know this they they feel more confident motivated to do and this coaching need not necessarily be from a business perspective or uh, you know or a domain perspective you could even do encourage your teams to do things like you know yoga zumba or you know whatever else uh, that kind of charges them up you know it energizes them during these times and that could be something they are actually look forward to so i know a few businesses where they actually have scheduled regular sessions of yoga one in the morning one in the evening and then i also know art of living is into doing this yoga and meditation as well for corporates and for businesses so get hold of something like this and ensure that you're giving a lot more to your employees right so either you coach them get coaches like me to work with them or get you know things like yoga zumba or anything else to uh, kind of keep them motivated and encouraged during these times and even the domain specific trainings if you can offer them that will also be great but it's very important to display compassion during these times you know people have different challenges especially when they're working from home you know it's difficult it's not easy to manage both the home stuff and the work and this is of course something very different so as a, a head business head as an entrepreneur you need to show a lot more compassion and you know you need to build a trust you need to trust your teams uh, because i also read somewhere that you know some of these organizations are doing something totally against you know they want the employees to work with their webcam on just to check if they are actually working now things like this you actually lose the trust of your employees and they just nobody would like somebody breathing behind their back right as long as they are delivering whatever they are supposed to deliver to you 
I think you should just uh, learn to be a lot more flexible with your teams and you know build trust. End of the day, humans work with relationships based on relationships. So what sort of a relation do you have with your team, right? So encourage and build trust and display compassion when required. I also got to know that, you know, some organizations are hiring new hires, which is good. I mean, you know, if your business can sustain that, go ahead and do it. But instead of letting go of some of the existing employees because of, you know, lack of cash and or a furlough and other things, just think if it's really the right time to get new people or not. So it may be a good thing. I mean, it depends on your business and your call end of the day, but you may want to just wait for the situation to get a little better and then hire. But this is just a food for thought for you and the kind of organization culture because you know with the right team in place you're actually building an excellent organization culture so what sort of organization culture are you building you know together with your teams that is also important because you know like things like when you display trust and everything compassion and uh, empathy to your employees then the culture also becomes like that because as I said, it's going to drill down. So when you show that to your one downs, they are going to be doing the same to their one downs, right? And thereby the entire organization culture is like, you know, people feel that they belong to it and then they're ready to do whatever it takes to keep the organization culture intact. And that is, you know, excellent for your business as well, because your business is relying on your people. So think about what is it that you're doing for your people and your teams. Next, let's move on to the suppliers, right? So you have your suppliers and vendors. Of course, if you're into manufacturing, you'll be relying a lot on your suppliers. And if your services, it's probably more of vendors, right? So how exactly are you managing with them during this time? Let's look at that. What sort of rapport? You know, like I said, it's all depends on what sort of relationship that you have, right? So what sort of relationship do you have with your vendors? Because if you have good relationships, they will also, you know, uh, support you all the little more that they can, right? So what sort of rapport that you have? What sort do you have an aging analysis? You know, especially if you're pressed for cash, are you um, uh, negotiating for better terms and conditions with your suppliers, right? So if you have a good rapport, then obviously they're also going to be a lot more cooperative and see how much they can also support you in your venture. And by preparing an age analysis of your supplier, you can actually uh, plan which supplier or which vendor that you need to pay at each point in time, right? So I think that is something that you can look through is the aging. And then you can see how you're negotiating, right? Uh, what sort of negotiations that you're doing, you know, how is it that you're making a win-win for you and for your supplier, you know, and probably get attractive terms and conditions in around. So that's something you can negotiate on. And then you can always get comparative quotes, you know, probably you're used to a particular vendor for a very long time, which is fine, but maybe there's somebody else, you know, who's offering better terms and conditions and, you know, better rates considering the current crisis. So look at that. You can always widen your supplier. Sorry, I lost connection. Uh, Sangeeta ji. I'm sorry, I lost the collection, connection and uh, here I am again and I'm just no, no. restarting from where we left.
yes so i was uh, telling you about the uh, the customers right so no i think i'm just getting started one moment so sorry about this yes so let's get restarted i'm so sorry about this so the customers so what can you actually do for your customers right because your customer is what who's getting you all the money so what can you actually do for your customers and uh, customer may be the king but he's the one who's actually giving you the bread and butter during these times so what can be done with the customer first i think you can also see how you can help your customers because your customers also going through these challenges and the crisis just like you so how can you actually go about and help your customers so that's something i'd like you to think through and that's how you actually building relation and building rapport with your customers so think about how you can actually go and help your customers by doing a good job and by helping your customer and you know going out of your way to help your customer you can also ask your customer to give you referrals so your customer can actually refer you to uh, new clients for yourself you know so that will be the best way because you don't even have to market your services so you can always ask for referrals so what sort of a uh, rapport that you have with your customers and then you can see how you can actually leverage on it and get more referrals for your business you could also try cross selling now if you're dealing with uh, you know multiple products or multiple services or both products and services you could probably explore the possibilities of cross selling each of these with your customers so see what is the best way to cross sell and then give them attractive offers you know like your press for business they also probably are so if you are actually giving them like attractive business offers so that will then you know want them to buy from you right so make it attractive for them and remember it has to be a win win both for you as well as for your customers right so how are you actually creating a win win strategy is something you need to think through and then if your money is outstanding with your customer right it's the best thing ensure that you follow up with them right follow up constantly continuously and you know so that whenever they have that extra cash it is you who comes to the mind and therefore they are ready to you know pay you and settle your dues and always you know cash is king uh, cash is oxygen is what i would say so you always have sufficient cash so ensure that you follow up constantly with your customers and if you know your customers also pressed for cash what you could do is you could offer them to pay you know, to pay you in tranches maybe you can say pay me 50% of the dues right now and then another 30% next month and then the 20% balance something like that come up with something creative so that as i said you know you have to create a win win for both you as well as your customer so think about how you can uh, set this up so that's with regard to your customers and then marketing you know many businesses some i have noticed uh, they don't like to market but now we are in times where marketing is essential right because tell me how will your customer even know that you exist how do they know that your business is there and you know they can actually get services from you or you know buy the products of yours so it is important to create awareness so look at marketing as creating awareness you know brand building about you and your business so look at it from a marketing perspective as well so when you look at marketing you know what is your marketing strategy do you want to be bullish on your marketing or do you want to be bearish on your marketing again you'll also have to take into account you know considering the current uh, situation uh, which is the best way to go about your marketing you know how is the best way to reach your customers so think about that what is the cost of customer acquisition right you need to know that as well because uh, there's no point in you going overboard and spending especially in the digital marketing and stuff like that and you need to know how much you're spending and what is the kind of returns that you're getting and how much is the cost of your acquiring a customer for you and thereafter set limits right uh, what i mean by set limits is set limits for marketing like you know you, it shouldn't be that you're going overboard on your marketing you must know how much uh you have you know and you don't go beyond a certain amount because 
are you even getting the sufficient returns from spending on marketing right so set limits and ensure that you don't go overboard and at the same time keep a watch on how much customers you're getting out by running your marketing campaigns define your target audience now whom exactly are you going to uh, be selling for you know who are you catering like it shouldn't be like you know it's to one and all so if you're able to create your niche and uh, target this specific our audience group that you want for your business your marketing results could get a lot more fruitful so think about who your target audience are and whatever money that you make and you know if the marketing whatever marketing that you're doing digital ads whatever if it's working well and it's you're generating a lot more revenue and money for you it may be good for you to kind of reinvest them back into your marketing business um, marketing for your business so think on how you can reinvest and think on these lines you know does is it really yielding you the results that you want so then let's look at strategy right what sort of strategy do you have in place for your business it, however big or small you know business may be even if you are a, a solopreneur you need to have a strategy in place right so first define your strategy you know what is my way forward what is it that i'm going to be doing and stuff like that about my business so put pen and paper together is what i would recommend and that will also enable you to come up with a business plan it's important to have a business plan because otherwise you're like a headless chicken going around everywhere so write a business plan firstly for yourself and of course if you're looking for investors or you know going to the bankers for a loan and everything everybody will ask you for a business plan so have a nice business plan in place so that you know how you're headed and what you need to be doing it's like a blueprint for your business right so i know you can create it because if you are the owner you are the one who would know it and of course you can take inputs from others as well but the onus is on you and then set common goals you know common goals for yourself for your teams for your individual teams as in you know your departments like everybody give them uh, the common goals so that everybody is together you know everybody is moving in the same direction it's not like you know each one goes in different directions then it doesn't make sense so ensure that there are common goals and everybody together as a team is working on achieving the common goals see if you can collaborate you know when i say collaboration not necessarily uh, you know just within your organization look for collaboration even with your competitors you're probably wondering what i mean by competitors now look some years back look at these banks right what did they do look at the atm originally you could draw money only you know a particular atm right if you had a particular bank's card you could draw money only from that atm but now what have they done you can actually any bank's atm is actually can work in another bank's as well what have they done they just collaborated together so see if you can collaborate even with your competitors maybe uh, or you know your peers or your friends like you know you can probably look at uh, sharing office space or sharing part time resources or things like that so see how you can collaborate because by collaborating you're creating a win win and you're also saving some money for your business right so look at means of collaborations see if you can integrate your business you know it could be if if your your business is uh, you know having a lot of cash you may want to see uh, if you can uh, get into forward integration or backward integration whatever so that you know you are under control and you actually save some money by doing that right uh, in the long run so see what works for you so these are just ideas that i'm throwing out to you see what you can do and most importantly see how you actually mitigating risks you know every risk anything anything in life you know there is always a lot of risk but how are you mitigating the risk and as a business person you have to take risk because taking no risk is the biggest risk so ensure you're taking the right kind of risk and how you actually mitigating whatever risks are involved as i said this is a who card world which is volatile uncertain uh, complex ambiguous risky and disruptive right so it's important for you to mitigate your risk get to know what's happening in your industry be updated you know talk to your uh, uh, industry peers whatever know the latest industry trends and you know what is happening around your industry and build your strategy around it that is also going to help you and very important define kpis kpi is nothing but your key performance indicators so set the kpis for your business you know like be it for each department each uh, uh, department head whatever you know have something that's measurable right what is the outcome that you want so what sort of strategy will actually help you to get to that so please define the kpis so that 
everybody is together on the same page and as i said everybody is working to that particular goal that you've set for the business so your strategy will be good you know if you're able to cover all these aspects of strategy from strategy let's move on to operations right so what sort of operations you know irrespective of what sort of operations that you're doing you need to ensure the operations are happening and happening smoothly and successfully because that's when your business is going to keep going successfully so look at your business efficiencies you know how efficiently are you utilizing resources you know when i say resources it's not just human but it can be your capital resources your space and you know whatever that you have how efficient is it you know what is the kind of returns that you're getting by investing in each of these so look at the efficiency levels the productivity and everything of the business what sort of policies and procedures you have in place because you know like get it from the internal controls perspective or you know any regulatory requirement you need to define your policies and procedures and say this is what the organization stands for this is what the values that are in place and stuff like that so it's essential for you to define policies and procedures so that there are no gray areas around so define these in place especially with regard to the business you know like who has to approve any particular you know investment or an expense whatever it is have them all set in place and that is what uh, will ensure a smooth flow of the operations so that even in your absence the business is actually going smooth how effectively are you utilizing you know as i said your resources how effectively are you utilizing them what is the uh, productivity levels you know it could be of your machinery of your teams whatever have a check on it so that you can see what can be done if there are delays investigate on the delays because remember delays will actually cost you money right so what sort of delays are happening is something you may want to look at ideate think out of the box think for newer ideas think for what is it that you can do differently in your business so that you are able to generate more out of your business right so important to think through and then do you have a bcp which is your business continuity plan your drp which is your disaster recovery plan you know it's it's good to have all this in place so that any sort of emergencies and everything you know how the business can cope so define these things then let's look at the last pipe which is technology so now as i said you know we are in the technological era and how are you leveraging on technology right so everything is now moving online so how can you move your business online you know what is the scope there you know what can be done so think about that i know of a, a business that was in uh, in the travel industry part of the travel industry and you know like we know the travel industry is actually hit right now and we don't know how long it's going to take for it to recover so what they did they pivoted on to digital so they are now running a digital agency as well so see how you can uh, play around because everything is happening online right now look at cost effective options you know the good thing about technology is it's very cost effective but cost effective in the long run right so you may want to uh, weigh those options to see you know how you can make it a cost effective option for your business how can you actually leverage on technology and you know uh, grow your business right uh, because through technology your reach is much wider you know i would say the globe has actually shrunk because of technology so how is it that you can leverage on technology for your business and do more that's something i need to you need to check on and then what can you do virtually right like how i'm talking to you in a virtual manner what is it that you can do virtually right so see if you can reach out to your customers virtually during these times and i would also urge you to look at business analytics you know of the past of your industry to see what is this analytics actually telling you you know it's probably there are some sort of growth curves or you know like the ways and means the how they got over crisis and stuff like that so look at the business analytics and maybe there's something hidden out there which you as a domain expert would know what is the best so i would also urge you to look through your business analytics yes yeah, so and apart from this i would also like to give some generic tips with regard to your business as i said display empathy be it with your uh, uh, your employees your customers your suppliers your stakeholders whoever because these are challenging times for everybody so it's best that the human aspect in you is coming out so therefore please display empathy relationships are what is very important you're building your business based on the relationships so as i said trust is a key factor and 
end of the day because of the relationship is when your business is actually going to uh, sustain and grow better so build the right kind of relationships seek professional help you know if things are not going right for you please reach out to the domain experts or like coaches uh, get professional help so that you're able to tide over and you know cross this crisis and emerge successfully so reach out for professional help in whichever area you think is required for your business reinvent yourself this is the best time to reinvent and see what can be done better for your business what can be done newer for your business right so utilize this time for reinventing and like i said it's important to adopt the right mindset because we already covered this you know the growth mindset is important and looking at things in a positive in good manner so that you're able to uh, have the right sort of a mindset and set goals right uh, short term goals medium term goals long term goals for your business and that will give you a path ahead like you know to say okay i need to do a b c d whatever for my business and then this will help me to move forward grow more and whatever so set the right kind of goals so now let's uh, look at the uh, the last aspect of our talk which is uh, designing right designing your actions so what sort of an action plan so now that you've heard me for the last i don't know maybe like 45 minutes or so uh probably you have multiple ideas brewing in your head right so what i would suggest is i'm going to give you a a little useful and very important tool that will help you to uh, design your action and your path ahead so what you actually need to do is it's called the goal matrix right so identify three areas in your business you know the top three areas in your business that you want to do and under each of them identify three steps now as i said you're the domain expert you know the business like nobody else does and therefore come up with top three actions under each of these areas right so that you know what sort of steps you will be taking for each of them so let me share a, a sample goal matrix here for you this is you can build something on similar lines for your business right so here it is so if you want high performance you know let's say in your business you want to, the areas you've identified are sales finance and the people so set yourself a target and a date so in sales let's say it is lack of revenue so therefore you want to increase your revenue so you want to achieve a certain amount of sale before the end of a particular date so what are the three actions that you want to take let's say you want to increase online sales you want to you know get into digital marketing referrals and seos and third is probably reinvent your product and services so like this you need to customize and come up for each area so that you know you're working towards them and it's not just you you can also share it with your team so that your teams are also you know aligned to this and they are also working in the same way so prepare this is just a sample that i've shared with you but i hope you get the idea wherein you're stating it it's a simple matrix that you know every time you look at it you know what actions you need to take and it drives you and propels you in that path so that is the uh, goal matrix which i would like you to uh, think about so by doing all this you know the abcd that we thought of we spoke about all along so what sort of outcomes will you actually be getting you will become more prepared for tackling these challenges right so you know there are challenges and you are actually at this point in time looking to tide over and maximize the potential of your business by tackling these challenges in a successful manner so you become more prepared to tackle these challenges you actually planning the next steps you know what more can be done how can you actually go go the extra mile and plan the steps and you know do what is required and most importantly you are looking at it from a solution approach right so what sort of solutions uh, are you looking for your business yes you know uh, you know there are different things there are different challenges that are there but you now start thinking on the solution if you were to be focusing only on the problems it may not really get if you start thinking of solutions that's when you'll be able to move ahead right so look, adopt the solutioning approach so what okay yes this is my challenge what sort of solutions how can i actually get over this is something that you need to think through so look at the outcomes that you want so since you guys have been a great audience and you know been really good so i thought of giving you a little giveaway okay so this book is uh, actually an audio book it's a free download on audible and it's called the power of high performance coaching it's 
about 30 minutes. So just go to Audible Suno app and then you can search for my name, Sangeeta Sumesh, and then this will throw up and then you can just listen to it. It's a free book, so do hear it and share your feedback with me. And then my first book, what I told you, The Glance at the Unknown, um, that's a free download on Kindle Unlimited. So do read that and let me know. And of course, my bestseller, which is What the Finance. So you can always read through that. It's a national bestseller and a lot of people have told me that they read it and they have been benefited because what I've done is I've given them uh, practical challenges the business has and a solution. So it's a ready-made guide. It's not the textbooky kind. And yes, it also has some interesting stories of successful entrepreneurs on their financial journey. So you could also learn a lot from them. So this is something that you could do. And yes, uh, I also have my YouTube channel where I keep sharing finance mantras, you know, short videos on different things where uh, I am educating entrepreneurs on, you know, different things that they can do. So do subscribe. The channel is called Sang Shasum, which is an abbreviation of my name, which is Sangeeta Shankaran Sumesh. So yeah, please feel free to subscribe to it and uh, listen to this. I normally keep posting videos on a weekly basis. So check that out. And uh, yeah, so if you want any individual or group coaching sessions uh, for your business requirements or anything, these are my coordinates. I'm happy to, you know, work with you on specific areas of your choice. So this was just to give you an idea and, you know, set a blueprint. So I'm the gain enabler, so I'm ready to work on your gains, financial gains, non-financial gains, whatever. So anything, do feel free to reach out to me and I'm happy to work with you, right? So I think with that, I have come to the end of my presentation and yeah if there are any questions i'm happy to answer them for you uh, you could please type it out in the chat box and uh, i'm happy to answer them uh, deepak probably if there are any questions you could uh, read them out and uh, i be happy to take them Yeah, I see. Okay, no. Yeah, any any questions? All right, if uh, there are uh, no questions, uh, probably we can end this session and maybe people can reach out to me uh, if they have any specific questions. Sangeeta ji, can you hear me? Deepak, is it okay then if we uh, close the session? Thank you, ma'am. That was an indeed an insightful session. Uh, the session was really, really awesome. I'm sure the participants enjoyed it as well. On behalf of Excel in Excel, I thank you for sharing your wisdom. Yeah, okay, I see one question in the chat box uh, that says many organizations are facing the loss situation for the first time after a good period. How to face it? Yes, uh, uh, definitely, yes, it is a loss situation. It is something new, uh, especially for your business. But as I said, you know, this is what the entire talk was based on, like to see firstly how you're adopting the growth mindset and how together with your teams you can tide over. Yes, it is a loss, but you know, how are you going to tide over? That's what is more important. So that's why we spoke about churning the business wheel and what sort of actions you can take to overcome it. So maybe you joined somewhere in the in between. So it'll be good if you can actually go through the talk from the beginning because the talk talks about all these things, yes. So somebody else is saying, can you tell about VUCA? Yeah, VUCA is yes, volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous. That is how it has been. It's actually a uh, term that has come from the US Army. 
so that's where it originally uh, started and then the all the corporates and the business have actually started adopting it because the fact is in business as well there is so much of volatility you know look at your foreign exchange it is volatile uncertain you know this is the most uh, the best example for uh, uncertain times and of course complex look at the complex laws that are there there's a lot of uh, ambiguity right uh, you know like even in the current scenario you you don't really know which drugs actually will work to you know give you the uh, the immunity and you know help you tide over in case you are positive so th this is the current scenario but in your business you'll have to see like you know i would say what sort of vision do you have like you know how are you actually tiding over what sort of understanding do you have of your customers right and how what sort of clarity do you have in thoughts and uh, how you actually uh, you know prepare to get over this so as i said you will have to come together with the team you will have to strategize on it you will have to put your brains together so there's no fixed solution to it because it depends on what your business is about and your uh, industry is about but you will have to think through on those lines you know put together as i said you know the collective brains is a lot more better than your single brain so you'll have to see and you'll have to start being innovative you'll have to reinvent yourself to tide over this so i think that should be the way forward there's no uh, one stop solution for this but you will just have to think on how you can actually get over this thing right so that is what it is so uh, connecting with stakeholders is difficult during these times especially for companies not technically sound yes definitely connecting with stakeholders is not easy and they may you know obviously look at it and tell you that business is not performing well which is right from their perspective but if you are able to go back and tell them yes you are right the business is not able to perform right now because of abcd reasons however i am planning to get over these abcd reasons by doing action 1 2 3 4 and this will help me now if you're sounding positive and you know able to come out with actions to tide over the crisis i'm sure they will understand as well and it's not that they are also expecting the same levels of profit as before because everybody is aware this is a global crisis right so they will also definitely acknowledge this fact but what is key is what actions are you taking right as a business now if you were to uh, tell them about the actions that you're taking and how you going to tide over the crisis i think that makes a difference right instead of just saying oh no this is not doing well and i don't know what to do now that is going to put off anybody even if you are probably the stakeholder or an investor in a business and somebody tells you that you're not going to be thrilled about it whereas if you say yes um, you know acknowledge that your business is being hit by the crisis but you're planning to take some actions around it and this is how you're planning to tide over the crisis now that sounds a lot more positive so that's what you need to tell your stakeholders about um excellent session thank you thank you very much uh, gopi uh, right yep so any other questions right so looks like that's uh, about it and sorry i've taken a little longer than uh, i thought i didn't realize the time because i just kept uh, uh, speaking and i didn't Uh, realize we are a little past the time but yes i hope uh, everybody enjoyed it benefited out of it and anything please feel free to reach out to me you know my coordinates and i'm active on all social media on linkedin and everything so all the very best to everybody thank you thank, thank you, you ma'am uh, thank you on behalf of excellent excel i thank you for sharing your wisdom ma'am i also thank the audience for their wonderful participation and support um Our next session is on 28 June on the topic Design Your Professional Services Business for Acceleration by C A Amit Kumar. The key takeaways of this session would be disempowering myths of professional services business, principles and strategies to design your professional services business, professional services business automation and acceleration blueprint. Uh, the next session is followed by is followed. on 4th of july by ca sandeep kothari on the topic modeling a franchise business opportunity followed by a session on 5th of july by ca shweta kochar on the topic managing business continuity and finance during uncertain times do not forget to like the video for more updates please subscribe to our channel you can drop your suggestion in the chat section stay tuned for more fresh talks happy weekend and thank you everyone Thank you thank you thank you sangeeta ji welcome bye